Hey guys, it's your boy, Ballface8020, back again with another great commentary. So, we're, you know, day after the Trump conviction, and I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised with, with the reaction thus far. Um, now... Nothing's going to stop liberals from celebrating and, you know, acting like they've won. Uh, what surprised me about their reaction, though, is that the obvious fear and concern on their part. They're putting a brave face on it, but, and some of them, I'm sure, really are like, you know, are just so delusional that they think, oh, this is it, Trump's done now, and now we've got him. Um... But you can really tell, it's like, you know, it's it's almost like one of those, uh, you know, dog that caught the car, you know, the dog's chase, the dog's barking dog's chasing the car and then catches up with it. And it's like, now what? It's a little bit of that, you know, it's, um, they just kind of, I mean, it, the conviction has just kind of made them realize like, now what, <laughs> you know, like, 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 where, where do we, where do we go from here? Um, so I was expecting them to be more euphoric than they are. And, um, Again, part of them is euphoric. They're they're very retarded people, and but I, uh, but there's like some real concern under the scenes about it. Real, not just concern, but frustration. Frustration in knowing that a this this isn't going to do anything. It's not going to change anything. B, uh, this isn't going to. I mean, like it's not going to send Trump to jail, which or or take Trump off the ballot, which are the two things they want. Uh, B, it's not going to. Um, you know, some of them don't admit that they think that. Some of them are so stupid and deluded that they don't even realize that. But most of them are there. Um, so that's the first thing. Then the second thing is that it's not going to um, change anybody's vote. No, nobody's going to be just like to not vote. Now, they're still coping. And they're, they're, I mean, there's two copes that they're really doing with right now. One is they're like, well, wait a couple weeks for it to reflect in the polls. And then the other is like, well, people maybe don't care now. But once he really does get sentenced, then people are going to care. And then, 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 we'll, then we'll wait two weeks and it'll reflect in the polls. They'll always have some way to like kick the can down the road. But at the end of the day, they, they, they know. They know that it's, that it's, uh, that it's um, this isn't going to do shit in terms of affecting votes. And then what was the third thing? And the third and the most important thing is the frustration and surprise that, that, um, the Republican Party, not just the Republican base, they, they knew that the Republican base would stay with Trump no matter what, but that the Republican Party would rally around Trump. Even the people in the party who obviously hate him, like the McConnell types, you know, are all saying, are all, are all copying Trump's line, saying this is a show trial, this is political, uh, it's not about the law, blah, blah, blah. And they clearly weren't expecting that. They weren't expecting the Mitch McConnell types to, to back Trump. And... Neither was I. Um, and that's why, you know, um, so that is like the pleasant surprise on on, on my part, at least. Like, I, I really thought I expected, I'm not sure what I expected with them. Like, I mean, like, I knew like the never, the never Trump types just aren't relevant anymore. They're, they're not even, most of them aren't even registered Republicans. Or if they are, it's just like for appearance purposes. So, I mean, I knew they'd support it. So, you know, whatever, you know, those guys, those people are idiots. And, uh, but like the people like who are Republicans, like who are partisan Republicans, but also hate Trump, you know, like, like, so, you know, again, Mitch McConnell and just people like Mitch McConnell, like establishment movement, conservative, you know, stuff like that, who like they would have preferred DeSantis would have preferred pretty much anybody over Trump. They hate Trump for a lot of reasons, um, to see them come out against the verdict. And like, like, again, not just, um, McConnell, but like somebody like Susan Collins too. Now they came out against it in kind of a mealy mouth way. Like obviously they, they would, they would love it if Trump disappeared. They're not going to become diehard warriors for Trump because of this. I'm not saying that, but they still publicly took Trump's side. And I don't think the left was expecting that. I certainly wasn't. And, um, you know, so like, so could, because all of that like really feeds into the whole, cause Trump's going to be the narrative by Trump and his, his supporters is going to be, 
this is a political persecution. Okay, the, 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 like we're like he's not. We're not going to debate the merits of the case. You know, it's, it's just, this is a political persecution, and the this really the Republican establishment standing by Trump feeds into that narrative. Now, <clears throat> my belief is that what the public thinks about this is that that yes, this is a political persecution, but Trump is still guilty. Like Trump really is guilty, but he's being prosecuted for political reasons. Uh, I, I don't know if that's true or not. I assume that at least some of the charges against Trump are true. I don't know because I don't care. It's it's completely irrelevant to me. Um, it's fine if you do care. I mean, I don't I don't have a problem with people who do. It's just that me personally, I doesn't make a difference to me. Like I said, like like for me, the example I gave is, let's say you had Trump like on tape giving, you know, state secrets to Russia, like saying, like, here are our nuclear codes. Here's how you disable our nuclear system. Now that I'm giving you this, please give me all that money you illegally promised me. And it, to give it, and it, all of this is on tape. None of that would lessen my support for Trump by even an iota because I don't support Trump the man. I support Trump the, and like, the force of nature as a means of you know, the waging war against the left. That's all, you know, Trump is to me. So, you know, whatever Trump's ethics do, like I think anything about Trump would be it ethics, competence, whatever. I don't necessarily buy all the criticisms the left makes of him on that front, but even if they were 100% true, they're just irrelevant as far as I'm concerned. It's not how everybody feels, which is, you know, again, it's fine. It's just, I mean, that's how, how I feel. So just because I don't care, if Trump did it or not, doesn't mean that there's other people out there who feel the same way. But the thing is, the public, whether they're right or wrong, has its mind made up. The public believes that Trump did this, did, broke the law and did, did all this illegal stuff. They believe that. They really do. But then they also really do believe that he's being prosecuted for political reasons. And I guess there's no reason that both of those things can't be true. I, I don't know that they are. I mean, there's, there's no question Trump's being prosecuted for political reasons. That's, that's just a fact. Um, did he, like, is, like, is he really guilty of this stuff? Like, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, the, the public is just assuming that he is, be, is because, A, sort of some sort of latent trust for the criminal justice system, and B, just they assume that Trump's a crook. Um, the first thing is not a legitimate point of view. I mean, there any, there, there's no reason, nobody should have any trust in the American criminal justice system, which is, like, hyper-politicized. Um, I, you shouldn't have had trust in it even before it was politicized. I mean, prosecutions in America have been railroading, you know, uh, innocent or at least innocent ish defendants forever. Um, and then, but it, the, um, but yeah, I already forgot what I was saying, but yeah, absolutely. Definitely a political persecution, Republican party, totally behind Trump. Then uh, one of the th copings I'm seeing, one thing that I'm surprised that I have been seeing is a lot of people saying that either they weren't going to vote Trump, but now they are because of this, or they weren't enthusiastic about Trump, but now they were because of this. And, you know, I didn't think that would happen because uh, like to me, it's like we already knew this was going to happen. So why would it change anything? I really do believe that is a phenomena out there. I don't think it's widespread. I don't think it's any more than a fraction of a fraction of a percent of the electorate. But I do think it's real. I do think it is a real thing. And it might have some meaning under the surface. And I'm also, but it's real enough that the lib shits have noticed and are coping by saying, oh, these people were always going to vote for Trump. Um, look, over 99% of the people who vote for Trump in November we're, we're going to vote for him no matter what. Okay. That's, you know, but there are probably tens of thousands of people, maybe hundreds of thousands who, who this would, this, this, so this is going to impact their vote, who would have not voted. And then who, who are going to plan on, who are going to not vote or are going to vote for a third party, but ultimately are going to go vote for Trump instead, just because it's clearly, you know, a political persecution. You know, going back to what I said before, me, I don't really have a problem with political persecution. I have a problem with it being done to us. But like when Trump gets back in office, like 
absolutely, I think we should use, you know, we should persecute our, use the law to persecute our enemies. And, you know, like, eventually I wanted to get to a stage where, like, you know, you can, like, go and, like, report your family members who say something negative about Trump. And then, you know, like the, uh, that scene in Swing Kids, when the, 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 the son reported his dad for, for bashing Hitler. And they, and I'm not comparing Trump to Hitler, but they like, and then the, uh, like the Gestapo shows up at his house the next night and they're like, you need to come with us. And they, I don't think they even did anything to him. They just, they just made him, they just made him come over and, you know, lectured him or something. But the, yeah, but the thing is, you know, the, again, I'm not, don't, I'm not saying we should copy the Nazis in general. I'm not saying we should copy the Nazis in general, but like stuff like that. Yeah. I would like to, I would like it to see us eventually get there. I mean, there definitely has to be, definitely has to be payback. And, it, and it's like, um, the, the whole thing with like free speech and rule of law and stuff, you know, is Stalin who said something really interesting about it. And again, I'm not endorsing Stalin, but you know, sometimes, Sometimes maybe a, somebody can be a bad guy, but still say something that's factually true. And Stalin said, we um, said ideas are more dangerous than guns. And we would never let our enemies have guns. So why would we let them have ideas? And I think that that's, that's correct. That's the correct attitude. You know, I think it's, and I don't even think it's debatable. And if you look at like, when America was founded, if if the founding fathers had had that attitude, we would never have had a republic or or the liberties that we do have. And those are still things that I believe in. But the difference is that the founders were doing that in, in a time where the other side wasn't their enemy. They were political rivals. They, they hated each other a lot of the times. They despised each other, but they weren't enemies. You know, like, I mean, like, even Lincoln didn't consider Southerners his enemies. But now we're in a, this is a different world. You know, I know that there's some people on our side who don't consider the left their enemies, but they all consider us their enemies. I mean, a lot of you guys just don't have liberal family members or you don't read a lot of liberal, what liberals say. But, it's it, you know, they're very, it's a very totalitarian mindset that they have. And they'll do anything. They'll they'll do anything. They're they're dangerous, and you can't let them have freedom, because if you do, they'll use free their freedom to hurt us. So, you know that's you know important. And, you know, and something like this, you know, something like this ends up being more of a wake up call for that. Great. It's just for me, I had already woken up over ten years ago. So, <laughs> for me, it's old news. Um, I guess for some people, this brings it home, and maybe maybe that ends up being a positive. Um, anything else on that front? Yeah. So anyway, I've had a few people actually ask me about like, well, what's the deal with like the conviction? Is Trump going to go to jail? And I really don't think so. Mike Cernovic was saying, uh, he's saying, look, the team Biden was running this prosecution. Okay. They didn't send, you know, they, they didn't get all involved in this for the purposes of, you know, giving Trump a fine, you know, a fine and a suspended sentence. They did this for the purpose of putting Trump in jail. Uh, I mean, that's, that's one way to look at it. I'm sure they'd like that, but there's, there's a, a few real problem, major problems with that. Okay. First thing, let's say that Trump is imprisoned. He's still going to win the election. That's, that's not going to change. Trump being in prison is not going to change anything. So that's, that's just, so no, that's say. I mean, the left might be so stupid and so deluded that they think it will. So they might try it in that sense. But yeah, the other thing, and here's the big problem though. If they try to put Trump in prison, the candidate for the Republican nominee for president, that immediately gets expedited to the Supreme Court. You know, which is the last thing the Democrats want. If that gets expired, then because the, because the, the court's going to just say, well, you can't, you can't hold them. You can't hold them or you can't put a gag order on them until, uh, during the course of the campaign. I know that like, you know, like the Supreme Court, they're a bunch of feckless sellout cowards. I mean, we got two good justices and the other ones mostly like, you know, some are like, you've got like Kavanaugh, Barrett to, to a much lesser extent and um, Gorish. Those three are like, eh. 
you know, those are like, you know, like, you know, like they're, they can be okay sometimes. Two who are always good, Alito and Thomas. And uh, that shitbird who runs the thing, what is it, Stevens? I, I, I don't know. He was usually bad, but he'll want, he's a guy who, there's not going to be a 5 4 verdict. He's going to want, he really cares about the legitimacy of the court. So he'll, he'll do it, you know, he'll go six. And then you've got three shit, shit brain liberals who are just, you know, who are just going to vote against Trump no matter what. Um, the, um, but that's the thing. Like the, the Democrats know damn well. That it's not that it that it's not gonna okay. Let, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. Your rank and file libtard probably doesn't, but the Democrats who actually like make decisions and run stuff understand damn well that if they try to put Trump in jail before the or even house arrest before the election, that that will go to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court will not refuse to hear that because that would be the goal. It's not is to have the Supreme Court just refuse to hear it until after the election. No, the Supreme Court will hear that. Not only will the Supreme Court uh, hear that, they will rule in Trump's favor, which would be a huge boost for Trump. I mean, it still probably wouldn't affect too many people's votes, but in terms of narratives, it would help Trump a lot. So I just I don't care what Mike Cernovich says. I know what he's I know where he's coming from, but he's he's just being he Cernovich sucks. Just don't don't even don't even read that shit bird. I uh, um so no, yeah, nothing's going to happen on that front. Then the only other um, political, I mean, you got the liberals who are all celebrating and stuff, but then Biden has to come out this week, which is supposed to be like this, like cathartic, great thing for them. Biden has to come out and say something about Gaza, which is an issue that really is tearing the Democrats apart. And in the long run, they're not going to be able to resolve it. In in the long run, the party is going to split just like it did in the U.K. And, um, you know, like I said, and, and, um, it's not like, again, it's that by, it's by itself, it's not going to cause, cause Biden too much problems, but it does, you know, mess up his whole thing. Again, it messes up the narratives, which is something that Democrats really think about a lot. And it's going to cause a lot of stress, you know, for, for lib shits. And, um, so, you know, so that's good. The thing is like, um, the situation with, uh, Instead of making a whole geopolitical, might as well just talk about it now. So if you just if you only wanted to hear about the American politics, you can just stop stop now. But just you know, like so, like kind of a summary of what's going on over there. The um, as I've said before, and a lot of people, a lot of my viewers who aren't Jewish don't understand this and don't believe this. If it was up to Netanyahu, Israel never would have retaliated for October seventh. Okay, the, if it was up to Netanyahu, this this whole thing would just go away. He would have just tra- made it. He would have just traded. I think the Palestinians want something like ten thousand Hamas terrorists in exchange for the hostages. Who knows how many of the hostages are even alive anymore? But at, you know, at first they were mostly alive. At first, you had over a hundred who were still alive, plus the bodies, which you know Israel wants back too. And you know, Netanyahu would have taken that deal in a heartbeat. Okay, if he could have. The problem for him is that he can't. Because his coalition is, he's, uh, Netanyahu is being prosecuted, you know, by the, it's kind of like similar to what's happening to Trump, you know, the people who run the country are just, you know, out to get Netanyahu. And, um, so he's being prosecuted. He's unpopular anyway. And he's the completely dependent on the right wing parties to, for him to stay in power. So he's in a situation, like, um, so he can't, um, he can't do what his instinct is, which is to surrender. And this isn't a thing. This isn't just me saying this from America, okay? Like, Netanyahu is Israeli... I'm going to go back again, okay? Anwar Sadat, that's the guy who got the Sinai Peninsula, the Egyptian president who got the Sinai Peninsula back from Israel, you know? He said that fear is the second layer of skin of every Israeli. You know, Israelis are cowards by nature. And... um the uh so and Nehenyatu though is even in Israel, Nehenyatu is regarded as a coward even by Israeli standards, even by the standards of Israeli leadership, the most which nobody would dispute. I don't care whose side you're on, nobody would dispute that Israel has the most cowardly, worthless leadership of all the countries in the world. I mean, nobody would dispute that. And Bibi is the worst of the lot. So in a in a 
uh, in a, you know, uh, in the most, the most cowardly member of the most cowardly leadership class in the world. He would love to just end this. So that deal that Biden is talking about, Netanyahu would grab it with both hands if he could. But he just, he can't because if he does, he's going to go to jail. He's going to get, he's going to get overthrown and go to prison. And Netanyahu is one of those guys who like clings to power, like Golem cling to, cling to the, the ring. In fact, if you notice as, um, as time goes on, Netanyahu, who kind of looked like a model when he was young, in, increasingly looks like Golem. You know, he actually like, he's like hunched over, you know, there it is like, ah, my precious. Um, so no, so Biden has to announce this like deal. It's all it's going to do is piss off the pro-Israel people in his coalition, it's really going to piss off the anti-Israel people in his coalition. There, there's just never going to be a ceasefire. What's, what's going to happen is Netanyahu is going to be overthrown in probably in September, maybe in October. And then you're going to see the war start for real. You know, like right where everything, this stuff now is, is nothing. The, the war is not really going to begin until Netanyahu is gone. And, um, which, you know, if you think about the time, September, October, that's a horrible timing for for Biden, which I mean, and it might, you know, if, if it ends up being a close election, it could hurt him, like in states like Michigan. But at the end of the day, I know people on the left. I know how they think. And yeah, you're going to have some hard, look, dude, my brother's one of these people. You're going to have some hardcore types who are going to be like, no, we cannot vote for genocide Joe. OK, now we can't do it. However, well over 99 percent of people on the left, I'm talking about even if they're like diehard socialist, diehard pro-Palestinian to them, the, their left wing tribal identity always will come first. And if it was like against Romney or something, then, yeah, cool, maybe they would sit out. Maybe they would sit it out. But against Trump, they, they can't do it. it it's, their tribal identity is just too strong. So for that, I mean, I don't, I don't see that that having an impact. It will be interesting to, though to see after Netanyahu gets overthrown, and I'm going to say I'll go on top of that. Netanyahu will be the last pre, last prime minister of the state of Israel. Um, who comes after Netanyahu will not be a prime minister. It'll be like it'll be a king, you know, a president or a king, probably a king, and um, that will be the end of the name, the state of Israel. The name will be changed to the Kingdom of Israel. And, um, the flag will be changed. Thank God. Yeah. You know, so we won't have to look at that abomination anymore. Um, but anyway, how will that impact Biden? I just don't think it will because I think Biden's going to lose big anyway. So, um, the, I, it, it would only be an impact in a close election, which I don't think is going to happen. Um, okay. That's all for now. See you in the next.